I didn't see you. It's good to be here. I'm the drink pro, Kyle. Hope you all are having a good night. I've got, well, the thumbnail said five, but actually I have six different pours in front of me tonight, all at different price points. And I'm gonna be tasting each one of them blind. I just have little letters on these glasses. And we'll see if I can guess what the price points are in each of these and uh, see if I can't guess what they are, at least on a couple of them. I feel more confident about my ability to pick out price point than I do about my ability to guess the actual bottle. So we'll see. Um, also, I have a pacer game on just off screen. A lot of you probably won't care, but as a lifelong Hoosier, I can't avoid basketball and I can't avoid the Indianapolis, well, I think they're the Indiana Pacers, Indianapolis Colts, but the Indiana Pacers. Um, so I'll be periodically peering over my shoulder from time to time. So if you, if you think I'm just showing off my newly cut hair, that's probably a better thing to believe than the truth. <clears throat> well, I hope you all are having a great day, a great thirsty Thursday. It's been a busy week for me thus far. Um, I, uh, oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why this shelf is empty, that's because it was nothing but four roses before but it's getting a makeover so we're gonna put some new bottles up there and that should be indicative of a new series of tasting videos I'll be doing probably live streams and um, you know the actual videos I I put out on a regular basis once a week on Mondays I, I try to do Mondays it's been more like Tuesdays most of the time but um, and if you're in the patreon you'll get them a day early always What's going on in the chat here? It looks like we got Tina, and I think that says Mark. I think that's actually Mark in Tina's account. Bourbon baller. Oh, shit. Here we go. Trevor sipping on an Elijah Craig store pick. Uh, bourbon baller is celebrating. Oh, good. Very nice. His homeboy and his wife had their first baby. Well, congrats to them. Uh, we'll have to have a sip in their honor in just a minute. Nate says, yo. Mike McAllister's got some scotch tonight. I gotta reach back out to Mike. He said he had something for me, and I appreciate the samples you provided. Um, <clears throat> we got some good stuff going on tonight, guys. So, without further ado, I'm at least gonna sip on something. I don't know if I want to jump quite into tasting yet, but I'm gonna sip on something. <clears throat> I do find that it's good to cleanse your palate uh, before you go into a tasting like this. I haven't had any whiskey today. My palate's, you know, free and clear, but. That also means that if I come in hot on pour A and it's a relatively high proofer, I'm going to be totally fucked. So we're going to rinse, uh, rinse lather and then we'll repeat. Just spread it all over my palate. Not one of my favorite bottles. Um, but it's good to wake your taste buds up which is why I do like that bottle. Very grain forward though. Um, and metallic, it's young. Anyway, <clears throat> hope you guys are having a good night. <clears throat> I wish I had a cough button for this mic. My current setup, I can't do a cough button, but at some point in the future, I will set this up so that I have a cough button. Speaking of the future, I uh, have been working with Yolanda diligently to try to buy a house it's a hard time to do that, but uh, we really want to uh, we really want to have our own place, someplace that I can set up and have it ready to go and purpose built for Drink Pro quality content. Because right now, it's, you know, we're kind of cramming all this in one space. The reason you have this angle is because I usually shoot from over there when I'm making my normal videos, kind of at this angle. <laughs> I've shot them from that angle. I, you know, it, it, this is not that big of a space, so. <sighs> Just brush myself like I'm a anxious dog. Okay. Uh, that's how today's going to be, I think. Um, well, I am curious what else other people are sipping on. Trevor already asked the question, but a lot of people didn't answer, so... For the other nine or ten of you that are in the chat thus far, let me know what you're sipping on. I want to know what you're sipping on. Um, making all kinds of noise. 
I've also started investing in cryptocurrency um, because YOLO. <laughs> and I've made zero dollars, which is good because at first I lost about 40% of what I put in and now I'm back to zero. So we'll call that a win. Um, Travis says my dog pees a little and excited. Yeah, so does our dog. It's not great. Um, all right, enough about dog piss. Oh, we gotta wake it up. We gotta wake it up. Okay, let's go ahead and get this first pour going. Now, I've got all the pours with little letters on them. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, and T. Yolanda lost the F. So, I don't know if you guys could hear that from the other room. She said, no, I didn't. Mike McAllister asked if I bought Dogecoin. I have not bought Dogecoin, but I bought uh, Shibu Inu coin, which is like Dogecoin's bastard brother. <clears throat> I feel the need to stand up for myself. Yolanda wants to stand up for herself. So, all of the letters are on little die cut sheets. And I didn't lose the F, I just couldn't be bothered to find the sheet that had the F. You guys hear all that? You get that all good mark's drinking hugh hamer how is that mark uh ramon's got the nulu extra and yeho tequila i've heard really good things about it i've tasted a couple of them at rural inn um they do sip a lot like a whiskey they remind me of like a combination of a whiskey and an Inye a typical and yeho <coughs> bourbon ball's got louis crystal B. Wendholtz, Evan Williams, Single Barrel. We got some good stuff people are drinking in the chat. I like it. I like the variety. Nate, of course, has his highly allocated Kroger brand of soda water. He is big balling tonight. He's going to give Bourbon Baller a run for his money. Anyway, six different price points. Um, these are not Bourbon Baller style price points either, by the way. These are price points that us mere laymen can enjoy. Um, I have a $30 and under category, $30 to $50, $50 to $75, $75 to $100, $100 to $150, and then $150 and up. Those are the six categories. Um, if somebody wants to throw that in the chat so people can keep track at home, they're more than welcome to. I'm not going to type it all out, but the point is, <clears throat> the point is, uh, it's fun to be able to compare side-by-side -side pours from these different price points. So we'll see how it goes. Tony's got the Luxro 12. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Nate runs $2.99 for a 12-pack. Yeah, we just got that same soda water because it's on sale. Yeah. Tony's got that. Tony's got that Doc Swinson. Um, Doc Swinson, I think, uh, may have actually been one of the options for this uh i put out some sample bottles along with my uh medium-sized bottle collection i'll call it uh that, that yolanda was able to pick from and yeah and nate has pointed out smash the subscribe button i mean i always love likes in the videos but if you're not subscribed to the channel please do i've been kind of stuck at like 845 850 just under 850 um, honestly, I've had like a lot of ups and downs. Like I got 845 up to 849, back down to 845. That's happened two or three times. I don't know why people are unsubbing, but fuck them. <laughs> That's their problem. But I would love to get to a thousand subscribers. It would make streaming a lot easier. It would make my job a lot easier. So if you can help me do that, it's real simple. Click one button. I mean, I'm always happy if you want to take the next step you can always jump in to the Patreon or support me on Venmo at The Drink Pro. But patreon.com slash The Drink Pro is a great opportunity for you to get bottles. You can get samples. Matter of fact, the next samples are coming up next month. In June, we're doing our next round of samples, and there are some real treats coming up in that. So don't miss out. Join Patreon today. Enough advertising. Let's get to drinking. Let's we'll start with sample A. <clears throat> now, one more time, I'll run through what the different, uh, the six different categories were. We got under 30, 30 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100, 100 to 150, over 150. Those are the six categories. I hear race cars. Oh. I found some numbers. What? 
I, I maybe the F is in here. Um, no, these are just numbers. I've got an A to 7, a 5, a 0, a 9, a 6, 4, 3, a 2, a 1. That's 0 through 9. I wonder if the F is up here, though. I don't see it. Stickers. By the way, this shirt's really fun. Um, so I also had some questions about... Where did my A go? Here's A. I had some questions about the merch store. Uh, we did have to close the merch store as it as it existed in the past. Um, it was just too expensive in that structure, uh, so we're moving to a different provider. Uh, I've been <laughs> having some trouble with the website, but we'll get that up and running very soon, and there will be uh, more and new merch for you to pick up. And I always appreciate your support. Now, A <clears throat> does not smell great to me right off the bat. It's very sharp, metallic, almost like sharp and sour at the same time. Watch, like A is going to be some big dollar bottle for my fucking luck. <coughs> Mike wants to rename the 150 and up category the bourbon baller category. <laughs> and bourbon baller says, smash that button's ass like a pimp. <laughs> Trevor's drinking good old Ohio well water. The next round of Patreon quarterly merch. Um, good question, Trevor. Yes, if you're at the 25 or above level... Um, I think it's the aficionado level or above. I'd have to check my terminology. But every quarter, I send out exclusive merch just for you, just for that small group of people in the Patreon. Um, the person who is supplying this quarter's merch is getting back to me. They had a piece of equipment required to make the merch break. And it's a small time. It's just a guy I know from one of my local bourbon groups. Um, once he gets that piece of equipment fixed... We'll have the merch created, and it will be sent out to my patrons at that level. So if you're not at that level, please consider joining, because I have a small window of time um, that if you get in at that annual level, I can make it happen for you. But I have a small amount of time before that window closes. <clears throat> yeah, this, um, it smells spoiled. I don't know of anything in my collection that actually smells like this. Oh, you know what this could be? Look at the color, though. Look how dark this is. I'm looking at the color of all these others. I bet. So one of the bottles that would have been available was my special house blend, which is basically just a bunch of cheap whiskeys barrel-aged in a little tiny three-liter barrel. Ah, uh, this might be that. Certainly the color is weird and different than anything else here. Uh, Mark's drinking rum. Or he's thinking this might be rum. Could be. No, it couldn't be. I don't have any rum. I got a little bit of rum. Not very much. <sighs> Cleveland whiskey smells like sour ass. Well, I don't get the ass component in this, but it's certainly sour. Oh, oh, it's going to make me sneeze. Man, Washington started whooping Indy's ass. That's no fun. I love people in the chat lamenting how bad Cleveland whiskey is. I still haven't tried any that I can recall. I mean, maybe it's a good thing I don't remember trying it, but... Cleveland whiskey, Cleveland whiskey, I haven't even had a drink yet. Cleveland whiskey, if you're watching, send me a bottle. And I'll say nice things. Maybe not about your whiskey, but I'll say nice things. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's a, there's a nice component to this. The more I keep smelling it and tasting it, like, it's got a nice cinnamon component. It's got a nice brown sugar component, but... On the whole, <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Oh, that one hurt me deep. Oh. Trev's going to let me try his again. We we had some in, well, we had a lot of whiskey in Fort Wayne, Nate. Uh and uh some of it was good and some of it was miserable. All right, let me taste this cuz the more I keep smelling it, the more I like the smell. So maybe uh, it just had a bad initial nose. I called it. I already called it. That is definitely the cheap whiskey finish in a barrel that I made. Although, I mean, it's not terrible. It's got like a big red gum vibe at the finish. But it's not good. Um, <laughs> it, it was an experiment. I am happy I did it. But it is definitely a whiskey to be put on a rock. Uh, hmm, I don't know about this. We got Mark G in the chat. What's up, Mark? I mean, we'll come back to that. But first taste, it's super oaky, very dry, a little bit tannic. Um, the color is notably darker than anything else poured. Uh, it's a little bit bitter and it tastes kind of cheap. has a little weird sourness in the nose. Every hallmark of the uh, nonsense barrel experiment that I did. So, <clears throat> I'm going to assume... You know what? I'm going to use these numbers to do uh, lowest to highest price. So, um, I got a two, got a three, and a four, and a one, and a six, and a five. Okay, I'll put the rest of the numbers there. I don't need this keyboard, so we'll get rid of this keyboard. Come on, Pacers. Let's go. Stop sucking. Um... <clears throat> So I think one to six, I'm going to go, oh, drop a three. I'm going to say that the uh, the lowest number is uh, the lowest cost, because that just makes sense to me. So I'm pretty sure that A is one for now. Let's dig into number, number B. Let's go with number B. Ooh, oh, I really like that nose. That's fun. Oh, I think I know what this one is. The color on this is darker than... I mean, they're similar. It's a little lighter. It's a little lighter and clearer. But this is beautifully sweet, soft, minty. This... I really like this nose. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's from the 150 and up category. You know. I think at the end, I will also do a ranking based on what I think low to high prices, but also my preferences. But this thing smells like a super, like a bubble. Um, it's got very bubblegum vibes. It's softly mint and very sweet, like already chewed gum. It's like gum that's already been chewed that you stuck on something and then uh, you go smell it. It smells kind of like that. I had a weird childhood. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Burn boss says he bets four roses in this somewhere. It could be. Definitely got four roses around the house. But you remember, Yolanda picked this, so who knows. Mike McAllister's got his bar almost finished. Nice. You have to send me some pictures of that. Or have to head out there. Or both. I love the nose of this. I think this might be some Canadian rye. Let's taste it. Whoa. That's way oakier than I remember. Um... Well, it's definitely minty. It's sweet and minty, but it's super oaky. <sighs> it could be Four Roses. But I also feel like it could be that 16-year Crown Royal that I bought recently that I really liked. Uh, 
Mark's going to be drinking either Russell's Reserve or a Nashville Barrel. I got to try something from Nashville Barrel Company. I see them a lot. They are popping up all over. I've never had any other stuff. might be a sneeze heavy episode guys I'm just really getting my face down in there today I guess by the way I did trim the beard up I'm not happy with where it's at but I stopped pro tip if you've got a beard or you're trying to grow a beard <clears throat> if you're not happy with where it's at don't trim it down let it go Figure out how you want it to look slowly over time. Don't feel afraid to start trimming it and then just stop in the middle of it. Unless it's totally lopsided. See, mine's a little lopsided, but not very noticeably. So, don't be afraid of that. Mike McAllister got a bottle of Mr. Sam for you to try if you stop by Kyle. Deal. Bourbon baller, stop messing around and drink the good shit. Well, let me taste this again. This could be good shit. You never know, man. That's the thing about doing this blind stuff. Sometimes you fuck around and find out you were drinking something really good and you didn't like it. That's so oaked, though. That's more oaked than I remember the... Um, I remember that rye being. God, what could that be? Mm, I'm not happy about that. Bourbon Baller said, or I'm sorry, Trevor said about Bourbon Baller, the Four Roses 2020 LE isn't a good pour for your buddy. I guess I will do 2020 Old Forester Birthday Bourbon instead. Well, having had both of them, I pretty strongly prefer the Old Forester. Um, and I really liked, if you guys didn't see it, you can check out my Four Roses lineup where I drank some heavy frickin' hitters from Four Roses. And gave away a sample of the 2020 limited edition to one lucky viewer. Uh, but the Four Roses 2020 wasn't my favorite. It was uh, bottom half of the pack for sure. However, the Four Roses, or the Old Forester 2020, it's not my favorite of the recent Old Forester birthday bourbons, but it's pretty solid, so I'm not mad about it. Matthew Combs snagged a Calumet 15 today. I need to do a video on Calumet, but I just, I haven't broke down and bought a couple bottles and I haven't really pushed anybody to send me samples of it. I really would love to do a video on Calumet. <clears throat> Alright, one more taste of this B and then we'll move on. Mark said he hoped it's better than Calumet 14. I had heard that it was. Damn it. Now that one is confusing. Let me go back to A. Shit. Here we go. Here we fucking go. God damn it. This always happens when I blind taste things. I second guess myself. It causes me all kinds of trouble. At first I was damn sure that A was the weird blend that I had done. Now I'm thinking it's B. Oh, it's not good, guys. This is not a good start to a blind tasting when I got six whiskeys to try, and I can't even decide which one I like better from A and B. Not a good start. <sighs> Damn it. We'll come back. We'll come back to that. I, uh, not, not a good start. We'll move on to C. <clears throat> okay. Oh. What the hell? Are you sure you picked whiskey from my collection and not just ethanol that was laying around the house? 
Good God. I'm legit trying to think what fucking bottle that could be. What bottle does I do I have even that smells like that? I mean Oh, I know what that is. I bet this is the Bourbon 30. I can't think of the brand that comes out of Bourbon 30. Somebody tell me the brand that comes out of Bourbon 30. You know it. Because it's all sourced light whiskey coming from MGP. But the reason it smelled like straight ethanol, because this, this fucking bottle was like 139.8 or something crazy. And when you ain't ready for that, it'll smack you in the face. Bow! Like that. That's gotta be what this is. That's gotta be what this is. Yeah, it's light. It's super sharp. It's creamy. Jay Mattingly, thank you. We got Mark and Nate there on there on the ball. Bourbon Bar says it smells like shit. It's probably bad. Everybody's chiming in now. Yeah, so it, it didn't smell good, but what it smelled like was straight ethanol. So it didn't smell bad. It just smelled like what it is, straight ethanol. But now that I'm letting it breathe a little bit. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty sharp. It's not my favorite nose. But I like the taste better than the nose. Let's taste it and see if I'm right. Yep, that's Jay Mattingly. Um, which, those bottles are pretty pricey. I think it was over $100. Um, bourbon Bottle, never heard of Jay Mattingly. Yeah, it's, it's a company called Bourbon 30... Um, they source a lot of old, uh, older light whiskeys from MGP and they, the, the coolest part about the whiskey company, honestly, is the experience. You can go down to their distillery, distillery, it's a blending room and you can just pick from any barrel in the warehouse. You can buy as many bottles or as few bottles as you want. You can blend them however you want. It's just candy land for drunks, <laughs> uh, for bourbon drinkers. And, um, <clears throat> Trev says, I hope that's the bottle of Mattingly you kept for yourself and not the one you got for me then. It is. Yours is separate. In a separate area. Yeah, this hasn't opened up the way I would like it to have. This was better fresh prep, fresh cracks. Stupid nose. Sorry about that. It's a fucking drunk fest. Mark's been down there. Mark knows. It it is just a shit show. It's designed to be a shit show, in fact. <laughs> yep. That's sad. That pick has not um you know, after what you know what, after this is all over, I might um I might take a little bit of that and put it on an ice sphere, because I bet it would do really well on ice. Since it's becoming warmer around here, I've been starting to put some of the whiskeys that I like, even ones I uh, really like without any ice, seeing how different things hold up to an ice sphere. Um, connoisseurs. I don't know what Bourbon Baller was, was talking about, but yeah, connoisseurs, that's the one. <laughs> Trev says, it sounds like a great time. We need to meet in Louisville and do a drink pro blend. I'm in. You don't have to have an appointment, I don't think. I think you can just show the fuck up. <clears throat> we do need to have another drink pro get together, though. We gotta get some people in a room together drinking bourbon. So uh let's get on let's get on the horn and make something happen, guys. Yeah. That's I'm feeling pretty comfortable that's number five slot, which is 110, 120. Um Boy, going back to B now, though. That's got to be the Canadian rye. It's got to be. If that if that's not the Canadian rye, I'll be really surprised. That would put it at seventy five ish dollars, which would be in category four. Um, let me check A again. Hmm. 
Mm. I am now less convinced that A is actually um, that A is actually my not my nonsense blend. Nate says he needs to do it before the baby gets here. Well, fucking hurry up. <clears throat> Pick a date. I can work from home. Let's move over to D. D as in dog. D as in drink pro. D as in join my Patreon. <laughs> Ooh, I like this one. This is this is some uh This is Woodford. Bourbon Mall says he never detects mint in rye. I I get a lot of spearmint in rye. I get that sort of sweet minty combo. Um I've gotten peppermint in a lot of other whiskeys that um that aren't really rye uh, uh that aren't ryes, but it, it's usually a bad sign. For me, if you find mintiness that you want, it's probably an awry. Yeah, just the way this thing smells is just classic Woodford. It's soft, it's sweet, it's creamy, it's slightly nutty. Now, I don't actually believe I've got just a standard-ass Woodford on the shelf. I think I've got a, a Woodford double-oaked, a Woodford double-oaked store pick, and a Woodford double-double-oaked. <clears throat> now, judging by the pour, if this is the double-double-oaked, I'm going to be sad. Because <clears throat> those were 375s, and I don't have a lot left. Ah, I just poured it into my mustache. This is definitely Woodford, though. It's got to be. Nothing wrong with that. It's a little soft, a little weak, but I love the palette. It's nice and oaked slightly, not over-oaked. Um, That's that's a great sip in whiskey. I mean, I think this may actually be the uh, so. Here's the thing: the Woodford Double Oaked under fifty, which will put it in number two slot. The Woodford Double Oak Store Pick over fifty, which will put it in the number three slot. This tastes like the store pick. <clears throat> because the store pick is from the Rural Inn. It was a little bit oakier. Makes me think this. But I'm not convinced by that yet, so I'm going to leave it in, like, hovering above the three slot on my board here. Ooh. Let's go ahead and try E, the fifth of six. Woodford Double Oak is fifty one ninety nine here. Mm. This is a high prover too. Smell that ethanol. It's very subtle though. This one, uh, this might be a, uh, this might be old Carter. <laughs> Because as high proof as they are, they, they don't drink that high proof and they usually actually kind of subtle. This one's got kind of soft caramel vibes. It's definitely the high dollar value area though. Um, because it's barrel proof. And not you know the, the slots I have left are the number two and the number six. And uh, I don't think I've got anything except maybe Wild Turkey Rare Breed that would fit under 50 that's barrel proof and that's this ethanol forward. And even then, Wild Turkey Rare Breed is not this ethanol forward. So I'm pretty convinced that's the sixth slot. Let's smell tea. 
Hmm. We'll come back to T. I use my old patented plug my nostril technique. Now this to me has a little bit of a sort of a minerality. I don't have any dickle though. Like there's no dickle in this house. I don't think. I guess I have, do I have any dickle? I don't think so. Yeah, Trev says old Carter Batch 6, but I don't have a bottle of that. He does. I don't. Let's taste it. Hmm. Interesting. This is um, a very balanced pour. Maybe too balanced. Okay. Now we're getting some nuttiness and some oakiness. Some black pepper on the tongue. That is high proof, but boy, it is smooth and easy drinking. Which is always sort of a, a bad word in some bourbon circles, but... Um, <clears throat> bourbon Baller's never had Old Carter. We gotta get Bourbon Baller some Old Carter. We can trade some samples, Bourbon Baller. I'm sure you got some stuff I'd like to try. By the way, Bourbon Baller, I just booked a flight today. I'm going to be coming to Washington State on the 22nd and leaving the 26th of September. So mark your calendar. Let's find a day or a time or something. Man, I, I don't know. I don't feel like that's Old Carter. It's too gentle. I mean, maybe the Old Carter... Um, maybe the Old Carter that I had has really mellowed out since it's been open, but it just seems so gentle. All right, let's go into T. Bourbon Boss says he'll take time off. All right, brother, pick a day, and that day we'll get together and have some fun. <laughs> I do have to be in a wedding. I'm actually the best man in a wedding, so I'll have lots of fun activities. So Thursday is pretty much out, but um, we'll find some time. We'll find a day. Matter of fact, Bourbon Baller, I don't know if you've reached out to me on email uh, or Facebook or social media or anything. Thedrinkpro at gmail.com. Reach out to me, Bourbon Baller, and we will find a time to make sure that we can sit down and share some fun pours together. So hit me up, Bourbon Baller. Let's make that happen for real. For sure. Uh, let's go to T here. <clears throat> ah, got it in my mustache. See, I'm going too fast. It's only nine ten. I started this stream at eight thirty. We've done. We've had forty minutes, and I'm already on the last pour. And the problem with that has nothing to do with me filling time for the stream. I can talk for hours about nothing. Um, but the problem is too many back to back to back. And now this is uh, this is just sort of uh, I might I might Nate. It is I mean I gotta run a bachelor party and we bought a penthouse at a Hyatt so I may I may. Um, 
This I really like the nose on this, but um, I just feel like I've done so many back to back so close together that my palate is spoiled. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get something that might help me. I was going to pilfer some bacon, and it's gone. <laughs> Nate, want to go to Washington on September 22nd to the 26th? We can stay in a penthouse at Hyatt on Kyle's dime. I bought the, the penthouse for one night, my friend, not for the whole trip. Um, but if you two schmucks can get out there... Uh, you can sleep on the floor in my actual accommodations and we'll have a fucking party. But I still gotta do my wedding shit. <clears throat> Burton Bolly, this fucking guy, Nate. Mm. I really like... Okay, you know what? Let me go deeper on some of the notes on these. I think that might be fun. I mean, this one is kind of minty to me as well. Trevor, want to stay at a penthouse for one night? I've never rented a penthouse before, so I was excited about it. If you guys come to the penthouse, you have to each bring at least three bottles of whiskey. That's your payment. And those three bottles are to be shared with the uh, the, the, the grooms, the groom-to-be. The groom? The groom? Is that what you... Uh, weddings? Whatever. The dude getting married. Those three bottles are to share with the dude getting married. Because that's his room. It's his special day. Penthouse is better than the outhouse. <laughs> Nate says renting a penthouse is a pretty solid flex. That government money must be nice. <laughs> it's definitely uh, something I could not afford to do without the help of every single other groomsman. So there's that. But this has a soft mintiness. <sighs> definitely got vanilla. Oh, you know what? This might be turkey. Because I get like a, a very light mint, but I definitely get the vanilla. I get slight maple syrup vibes. A little bit of clove. <coughs> Man, sneezy today. I'm getting a lot of mint today and I'm sneezing a lot today. You know, sometimes your palate is just different than other days. It's hard to keep track. All right. Definitely uh, a slight herbalness. Oh, yeah. September is the start of the harvest. That sucks, man. Your birthday is right in the middle of the harvest. Well, that's why we got to do something else soon, man. We got to get together sooner rather than later when you're done with the planting and you're before the harvest when you're in the growing there's not a lot of fruit for me on this particular pour um, that government cheese I mean this thing is mostly herbal um, I get some sweet aromatics it's slightly herbal I get just a hint of sort of savory spices. Maybe if you go looking for it, I can get like cherry cough drops. Like the mintiness kind of coincides with this black cherry vibe. Mm. 
maybe just a touch of cooked peach as well. Nate could never fucking be a farmer's wife, good lord. My boy just cried when I gave him his present. That'll boy. That'll way. Gotta get him. Gotta get him crying a little bit. Who is he celebrating? I wanna make that motherfucker emotional. I love it. Cheers. Yeah, that's the un that's the unwritten part Travis pointing out in the chat that, you know. It's sad when uh, when he's gone, but it might also be kind of nice to have you out of the way. Have It's nice to have just domain over the whole space every once in a while, you know? Now, what the hell is that? That bastard never cries. That is a very confusing pour. It, it it did oh did she put both of the fucking Kilko says got a promotion buy an expensive bourbon. What's up, buddy? By the way, Kilko whiskey musings. Your samples are going to be in the mail tomorrow, I think. I've got all the samples poured. Um I just got to package them nicely. Man, this this fucking this pour if Yolanda pick both of the if she picked both of the double oaks and knew that they were different in price, that would be so annoying. That's kind of what it smells like happened though. Although that this, wait a minute now. Now this is starting to smell like uh, old Forester. No. No, that's Woodford. Let's try tea again. Mm -mm. Not Woodford. What is that, though? It's very generic-y, bourbon-y tasting. Let's go back to A, which I have as my lowest number right now. No, that's gotta be. That's gotta be. Oh, that's gotta be my barrel. That one just needs ice. I've designed... Well, I didn't design it this way, but I pulled it and realized it needed ice. It does good on ice, if you can believe it. Oof. I don't know about that without ice, though. Um, whew. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I went through Kilko. Looking forward to it. I went through... Uh, the videos, I, I didn't watch all the streams, but I went through your videos to, to watch a couple of them and then just scroll through them and see uh, what things you had tried and made videos on. So hopefully I got some stuff in there you either haven't tried before or haven't made a video on. So, cheers, buddy. That's just so soft. Like, what do I have that's that soft? It's like 40%. Streams can be stupid long. That can happen. Um, I try to keep my streams between like 90 minutes and 3 hours. Usually around 2 hours, but it um, depends on how much fun I'm having and how much I'm drinking. Man, that's a tricky one. Um, yeah, no problem, man. Uh, that one, um, God, let me go back to D again. Oh, man, the nose on D is bananas. Fuck, that could be Old Forester. God, I'm going to be really embarrassed if this is like Old Forester 150th, which is definitely an option. And I'm like, yeah, it's a $50 whiskey. Fuck. 
It's a bad look. It can't be, though. It can't be. It's way too soft. That's a fucking low proofer. Oh. Ugh. This splashed whiskey everywhere. Damn it. Ugh. That's kind of night it's been. I always thought it'd be funny to do a stream like this. Because I can't see anything. I, like, my vision it becomes blurry here. But I think I look a little insane like this, and it makes me happy. So today we're drinking whiskey. Let's drink some bourbon, guys. Okay. I do have 1792. I do have 1792, Nate. That is a good observation. But I think I've got... I think the only one I've got open... She didn't She didn't pop any bottles. That was off limits. I think the only one I've got open is a store pick, full proof, though. And neither of these are full proof. I might have a bottled and bond open, though. Bourbon Baller, the $50 category. Bourbon Baller really likes this emoji. <laughs> Burn Ball, you've done this emoji like five times a night, bro. <laughs> yes, they do. They make me definitely look smarter. Which is not helpful. I need to look dumber. I need to slow play my intelligence so people think I'm dumb and they try to take advantage of me and then I can flip it on them. Buddha's got here late. He's got his Evan Williams bottled and bond. Cheat one, but he loves it. That's a solid bottle. Bourbon Baller point out, $50 category should be the baller level. More to offer uh, for good bottles. I kind of I got to agree. What was that? I kind of I got to agree. Fuck, I don't know. Good point, Bourbon Baller. Um, the $200 level is certainly like making it rain on the hose, but the $50 level is the I'm going to drink this whiskey and like it and feel like I'm not lighting money on fire level. So... Got to agree with you there. Man, I really like tea. Tea's really hitting right for me right now. I was talking with my wrenches before, Trev and Nate, and we were talking about um, maybe doing a barrel pick for the Drink Pro. Um, now he's just doing it on purpose. Um... Yeah, I think doing a drink pro barrel pick would be a blast and trying to figure out who I could do it with and what that would look like. And They would probably be Patreon-exclusive bottles, um, but I'd probably let people get them at low levels because I don't have that many patrons yet. Um, yes, thank you, Nate. Please like and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, it helps me out immensely. I'm trying to get to 1,000. I need your help. It's, a, it, it's super simple. Click the bell. Notifications. Yada, yada. Uh... <laughs> But uh, I've, been, I've been thinking, like, it would be really cool to do some store picks, private selection, whatever you want to call it. Put my face on a bottle, is what I'm talking about. Um, and selling them through the Patreon. Uh, but uh, it would be cool. Bourbon ball, it's a self-portrait of me. Nice. Um, but the reason I bring that up at all is because we were talking about doing... A Woodford pick, a double oak pick would be even better because I really like a lot of the Woodford stuff. Um, and I think it's low enough price that it could sell pretty easily. It wouldn't be insane. The problem is you have to buy two barrels together because they won't let you buy single barrels. They have to do this blending process, which I feel some kind of way about that, but I guess I get it. I don't really get it. I don't understand why they're doing that. Kilco, the climb to 1K is real. Yeah. <clears throat> I was doing really great until I, until I um, just stopped giving a fuck. <laughs> when I gave a fuck, and I really was a tryhard and was really trying to get subs and was really trying to make connections with the bigger channels, I was doing pretty good. But um, I'm not growing as fast now, but I'm a lot happier. So you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. I'm glad I'm, glad I'm not at 1,000 now and killing myself trying to get there. This is, I'm, I'm happy to have 12 people in this stream drinking and shooting the shit with me. This is what I'm here for. If I can get a thousand, I'd love it. If I don't, though, that's fine, too. 
Please hit subscribe, though. It helps me out. I would love to do it. But uh, I'm not going to beg you for it. I'm just going to tell you to do it. Got to set your own path in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes that means learning to care less. It can help you out. I got enough shit going on. I'm trying to buy a house. I'm trying to figure out how the world works. I got like 12 doctors I'm supposed to go see. One step at a time. Yeah, Bourbon Boss took a long time to sell his wood for barrel pick. I believe it. Make an awesome tater sticker with my face on it. That's right. Kilko says he's a broke SOB, so most of my purchases cap out at 40. Greg, granted, I'll snag some at 50 if I really want to try them. That wasn't what that said, but that's what I read. <laughs> well, Kilko, um, I don't think anything in the kit I'm sending you is less than $50. So, <laughs> Nate says, in today's episode of Kyle's Soapbox, <laughs> way to take the piss out of me, Nate. I love you, brother. That's funny as hell. Oh, man. I love that. I love that. <laughs> uh, Kilco, that's 100% right, man. You gotta do it because you love it. That's how you stay in the long run. <clears throat> And it's so weird for me, Mike, that Woodford doesn't sell very well, but it's very good. Like, why doesn't it sell better? People overlook it. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about Knob Creek store picks being sort of like the best value in bourbon or like the best, like the last best kept secret or whatever. Honestly, like the double oak, if you can get a double oak pick for like 50 bucks, sometimes I will prefer those to the Knob Creek picks. Like, it's just more my profile on average. Maybe that's controversial. I don't know. Well, now I'm just drinking tea. Let me go back to D. Damn it. They're very similar. Tea feels like it's got more umph. So I'm going to put it in three. I'm going to put T D as in dog. feels like it has more umph. So I'm going to put it in the third slot. T, I'm going to put in the second slot. <clears throat> it's too low proof, Bo, so, said someone about Woodford. Yeah, it's low proof. It's an easy drinker. So the fuck what? So the fuck what? Why are people such proof whores that they can't enjoy a 45% alcohol pour? Come on. That, to me, says you're in it for the wrong reason. If you prefer higher proof whiskeys, if you prefer 60, 70, whatever, you know, hazmat nonsense, drink what you like. But if you can't find something to enjoy in a lower proof whiskey, that makes me very skeptical. Because even, even people I know that love high proof whiskey, they'll find things that are at 50%, 47%. They're like, oh, this is really good. Yeah. Bourbon Baller, one of my favorite low price hitters is Cooper's Craft 100 Reserve. I've seen Cooper's Craft. I've never picked it up. I definitely will have to try that, Bourbon Baller. Yeah, Trevor is learning that he's not a high proof whore like he thought he was. Okay, I'm going to go through the lineup again. We're going to go least expensive to most expensive, just to sort of a gut check. See if I still believe what I believe at that point. Boo! Sticky tack. Um. If I still believe it, then I'm going to go ahead and do a reveal. If I don't believe it, then we're going to rearrange some things. Um, either way, I'm actually going to grab a pen, and I'm going to put my order of preference as well. Let me grab some paper. This will work. This will work. Oh, man. Mark G says, Woodford was my gateway bourbon. Love the double oak. Don't care much for the regular fare. I kind of feel the same way. 
Baller says, here's the problem with everything Woodford offers is the same proof, with the exception. Um, it gets boring for a lot of people. Totally understand that. Feel that way, too. I like Woodford Double Double, said Mike Halliday. Spicy up front and caramel icing finish. Never care for the other Woodfords I've had. I've had some really great, great Woodford store picks, but they're hard to find because, I think, of that blending that they're requiring. I don't know why Woodford is just hell-bent on only doing two-barrel blends as their store picks, but there are some good ones out there. Yeah, and Mark G., there are some Woodford batch proofs that are pretty solid. Matter of fact, I've got one of those on the way. The most recent one. Which I gotta get soon, because I gotta make a video on that. Alright, let's start with the cheapest one. I'm pretty fucking sure I know what this is. I'm pretty sure this is my Nonsense Nightmare blend. Although on the nose... I don't know. It's kind of icing, creamy ethanol. It's it, If this is my nightmare blend, it smells way fucking better than I remember. Way fucking better. Ben, just started a bourbon channel of my own. Any advice for YouTube news? Dig the channel. Keep it up. Thanks, Ben. Um, my advice for YouTube noobs is... Don't try... Don't compare yourself to any other channel. You want to. You really fucking want to. You want to every day. Every day you want to try to be like X. Be like Y. Get the kind of subs or the kind of views during a live stream or on a video that channel X or Y gets. The, the sooner you break yourself of that habit, the happier you're going to be. And it's fucking hard to break that habit. I spent a lot of time and energy trying to not be like other channels. And the funny thing is, it's kind of Buddhist in a way. You can't try to not be something. Because then you're just basing who you are off of what they are. So you can't try to be like them. But you can also not try to not be like them. What I'm saying is be yourself, Ben. And tune out everything else around you. Make content that you like, that you feel good about, and that makes you smile. And other people will find it, and they will like you. The reason I have 12 people in this stream right now is certainly not because I'm advertising aggressively or because I'm trying to bring people onto YouTube. And I know other channels with thousands of subs that don't have 12 viewers every single stream. You know why? Because they're fake. They don't be themselves. They don't just, you know, exist in the space and let people come to them. I think the sooner you can feel comfortable like that in your own skin and without the appreciation or the admiration of others, the better off your channel will be. Not just in terms of viewership or subscribers, but in terms of the content you make. Because that's why we're here. If you want to get famous, don't make it on YouTube. It's too crammed of a space already. But if you want to have a good time and share good whiskey with good people... Just be yourself. I got a squirt. This is my little dog. Her name's Oreo. She's almost 15. We're going to throw a quinceanera for her in June. She's super anxious and doesn't want to be on camera. I keep looking over at mom. She knows she gets to go lay, lay in the big bed. <laughs> Kill cup whiskey. This has been the Drink Pros TED Talk on loving yourself. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I fucking love you guys. I love, I love getting roasted. It makes me smile very much. Uh, totally true, though. Totally true. My pleasure, Ben. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, if you haven't dropped your channel, um, I, you know, I don't think we can click on your name, so drop a link to your channel in the chat so people can go check it out. I would do the same if I was Kilco. My, uh, my, my mods won't boot you guys out because you guys are being engaged in chat. I don't like spammers. If you come in and spam the chat, you're fucking done, but y'all are engaged, so... Drop a drop a uh, a link. I think you can click on on uh, man brain fart. I think you can click on hyperlinks in the chat. I think so. I think so. What else we got going on here? While I was 
so so distracted um nate says i'll be getting the bottle at the beginning of june okay sounds good bourbon baller pimping ain't easy need to hustle that shit i mean bourbon baller's not wrong like that's a one way to do it it's not the way i would do it um it's the way to get famous but do you really want to be famous like really though do you really want to be famous sounds nice if I had to choose between being rich and famous, I would choose rich every fucking time. I would rather be a millionaire in a crowd of nobodies than a billionaire unable to find any personal space. Just my two cents. Okay, number one, I'm keeping it number one. Even though it smells really fucking good, I really like the smell of it. I'm going to just pat myself on the back for that. Because... Taste is very light. It's very oaky. It's very dry. It's a bit tannic. Not my favorite. Um, bourbon note. I try to speak the truth always, Kilco, but a lot of times I'm not able to do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll check out your channel, Ben. Bourbon note. All right, let's try number two. Ooh. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Now this is not smelling as much like the double oaked as I remember it. This is more complex. It's more subtle for sure. Sort of soft, slight rye grain. But not it's not a rye whiskey, I don't think. If it is, it's like a barely rye. One of those barely legal 51 percenters. Man, who just, or Pace are getting their ass beat. Not cool. I really like this. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with that. So, I definitely like two better than one. Bourbon Baller says, not saying that you got to put a lot of time in it and offer great content, review everything, including Cleveland Whiskey and Marlort, but keep people coming back and advertise making good thumbnails. That's fair. I mean, Bourbon Baller is hitting on some good advice there. Like, thumbnails make a big difference. Clickability, you know, you got to make the name of the video and the thumbnail something that people want to click on advertising does bring in new eyes which is really valuable you can't rely totally on word of mouth um but uh you know i think to me that's great advice and you're totally right bourbon baller but to me that stuff that when i googled how to become a youtuber i could find really easily the thing i never saw anybody talk about was what i just talked about which was the emotional component and the um attaching yourself too closely to seeking that engagement and that attention i think you're absolutely right bourbon baller that that's what's necessary to get the views to grow the channel but i think you know a, a guy i like uh, a guy named gary v a lot if you don't follow him gary v is a entrepreneur he's sort of a social media presence um but one of the reasons i like a lot of what he talks about is because he will give really good advice on how to make a lot of money how to grow a business very quickly but he also points out that a lot of people think they want to be entrepreneurs but they don't really want to be entrepreneurs they want to be wealthy and the lifestyle um, that accompanies YouTube success or social media influencer success is not something that everybody will actually enjoy because uh, it is kind of a grind. It just doesn't look like it because it's not supposed to look like it. So find what you love. And then if you know you really love growing the shit out of your channel, there's a way to do that, but it is a grind. I'm promising you. So find what you like first. That's step one. Let's go on number three, which I have as D. Let's see if I like that better than T. At this point, I'm just deciding which one I like best. I don't know. What got on my shirt? I haven't even eaten anything yet. Clickbait in the biz. 
that's definitely the Woodford. Um, I may actually like two better. Yeah. So. I like, um, yeah, I like two better than three, which really surprises me, to be honest. <laughs> Gilco, I want to be a successful hermit who hoards whiskey. Hey, you can hoard all the whiskey you want as long as you share it with your friends. You gotta share it with somebody. I recommend your friends. Or other YouTubers. Let's just, let's just say. Let's just say. <laughs> That's right, Bourbon Ball, you can talk to the big channels for a $5 Super Chat. That's right. And I would love to be able to accept Super Chats. If I get to 1,000, you better believe I'll accept Super Chats. But I also am damn sure going to keep talking to people who aren't sending me Super Chats. Um, I will very much appreciate your Super Chat, and I will shout it out. But that's absolutely right, Bourbon Baller. That, um, that's how those big channels make all their money. I, I, I far prefer giveaways anyway. Yes, that's right. That's right. I mean, I've had this scrolling at the bottom of the screen for a while. I will happily take your $5 Venmo super chat and give you a big shout out. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll pull up my Venmo right now. If anybody sends me a $5 Venmo, um, I'll do something. I don't know what I'll do. What I'll, What should I do? If somebody sends me $5 in Venmo, I will... Uh, I don't know. Tell me something to do and I'll do it. Just put it in the note. <laughs> Nothing stupid. Like, I'm not going to do anything crazy, but... Mark G, crack the NBC rye. It's yummy. <clears throat> okay, uh, let me get back to this. Let me try four. <laughs> Pappy giveaway. <laughs> I will at some point give away at least a taste of Pappy Bourbon Baller. I can't give away bottles, but I'll give away a pour at some point. I think I already have given away a pour, actually, but I might do it again. Um, let's see. Kilko says, I do plan to send out samples someday, but I think I have PTSD from working in a packaging shipping store one Christmas. So, yeah. I feel like that could really rub you the wrong way. And yeah, when you send out samples, it, it's kind of a lot. Um, I will strongly recommend that uh, the United States Postal Service, where I'm at, has a contactless kiosk so I don't have to talk to anybody and I can send out samples that way, which is nice. Uh, ben says, been a subscriber since the Obtainium Light Whiskey Review. Cheers, Ben. That's a long time. Been, that, been in here for a minute. First live stream is every Thursday. Yes, um, and I do a bonus live stream once a month for patrons exclusively. Got to self-promote. $3 a month level will get you into that live stream as well, and a bunch of other... Every week, I release new content exclusively for patrons, so highly recommend that, Ben. If you have been enjoying what you're seeing and you want to buy me a, a well pour of whiskey once a month, then you can get a bunch of other cool content, too, and... Uh, you know, the Patreon live streams, I haven't said this yet to anybody anywhere, but the Patreon live streams are about to include some exclusive giveaways. Um, similar to what I did last week with the, uh, you know, everybody come in, join, throw a couple dollars around. That kind of thing is going to happen again, but exclusively for patrons. So if you're not in the Patreon and you want access to that kind of cool shit, join in. $3 level will get you in. Get you in the door. It's less than one well whiskey a month. It's worth it, guys. It's worth it. I'm telling you it's worth it. Buddha says, 5 a.m. comes quick. Great live stream. Appreciate you joining, my brother. Akeem's here. Time to stop the stream. <laughs> What's up? Akeem the Dream is in the house. Uh, but I don't know if I answered your question, Ben. Yes, these live streams are every Thursday, usually between 8 and 9 p.m. Okay, I got I got to taste three again to remind myself here. I like three. I do like two better. Okay, here's number four. 
That's got to be that. That's got to be the Canadian rye. It's got to be. If that's not the Canadian rye, I'll lose my mind. <clears throat> I'll lose my mind if that's not the Canadian rye. That's got to be it. It's got to be it. Barrel, the bit, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers for Monarch Whiskey. I just threw up thinking about that. <laughs> I am not a big MGP Rye fan, but I would love to try another one. Um, Akeem picked up the Barrel Seagrass is nice. We have to share a pour of that, Akeem, because uh, I'm really curious about that seagrass. I'd love to make a video on that seagrass. Because I've heard the same thing Nate has, which is that's a super unique pour. This thing is definitely... You know what? I mean, I hate to do it, but I think that's... Uh... Oh. I didn't rank four. Four is definitely that Canadian rye, but where do I put it in my lineup? Trevor can't buy the seagrass not knowing how it is. That's why I gotta review it. That's why I gotta get together with Akeem and we're gonna drink some whiskey and review that shit. I gotta get him over to my place. I know he's got a nice house up in the suburbs and whatever, but you gotta come be in the city, bro. Come out here where it's hard for a motherfucker. <laughs> Alright, where does this rye go? Man, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, I think that rye is my favorite thus far. I think that number four, it's got... If that's not the Canadian rye, I will just lose my fucking mind. That's got to be the Canadian rye, and I like it best so far. Let's go back to five. <laughs> Man, the five is definitely the Jay Manningly. Uh, it's not opening up as well as I had hoped it would. I may have to try Trevor's bottle again before I give it to him just to see. Nate says, yes, I do. The Crown Royal 16-year rye. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. I may, if, if that is that... Uh, that Jay Mattingly pick, I may have to taste the one that I have set aside for Trevor again. Just because this has opened up so poorly, I want to know if his opened up equally as poorly. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, and then finally, number six. Man, I don't know. That... Okay, this is about to be ugly, guys, because I'm confident in four and five. I am not confident in two, three, or six. Let me go back to let me go back to two. It's a low proofer though, and six is definitely not a low proofer. I think six is Old Carter Bourbon Batch 5, which got rave reviews, but honestly was not my favorite Old Carter, especially after trying batches 7, 8, and 9, the most recent releases from Old Carter in their bourbon lineup. Wow, those are good. And 5 got a lot of clout online, but it was not my favorite. Um, I think I got to put it between 2 and 3. So... Let's do a reveal. Um, Bourbon Baller says, try Stellum if you can get a chance. Trevor just authorized me to try something, so I probably will. Sprite. <laughs> Akeem's getting rye and Sprite. Well, now i got to try it. Okay, here we go, guys. Uh-oh. This ain't going to go well.
All right, first I'm going to do the one I knew and I got right. This is slow motion, Jay Mattingly. Um, there you go. 139 proof. I think that's the big take home. It's light whiskey, 139 proof. It's 13 year old MGP light whiskey. Um, it tastes like it. We're going to put that on an ice sphere here in a minute. What else we got in here? Hey, I called the old Carter too. This is, again, this is not a bad pour by any means. It's very well balanced. It's very classic bourbon flavor. But I feel like I like some of the old Carter stuff when they go a unique direction. And so while this is a perfectly good whiskey, for a $200 bottle, I want something more unique than this. And 7, 8, and 9 were all fantastic and unique. So it's good pour, though. Good pour. But I got the top two. Uh, I called the top two bottles even though they weren't my favorites. Now things get more interesting. Oh shit, no I didn't, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Now I've really fucked this up. Wait a minute, are these letters? Holy shit, no way. Oh, wow, guys. Uh-oh. Okay, so I, I was forgetting what I was doing, and I forgot that the letters... So you can see this is the $100 to $150 level, and it's a C. I have C at my number 5 slot, so C is correct, and it was on this bottle. So I had slow motion in the right spot. But my lowest whiskey... Oh, this is not... This is not good, guys. Um, my lowest ranked whiskey was A, which was my highest dollar whiskey. Now, a lot of this bottle is gone. Wow. I kind of don't have words for that. After I taste it again, I real I recognize what I was saying, but um, wow. Wow. I, I, I'm kind of at a loss on that one. Um, I'm at a loss. I'm gonna write these down so I can keep track of them, but that just, really threw me that means my two most expensive bottles were my two least favorite bottles in this lineup batch five old carter was my least and second line the second one was this j mattingly slow motion fuck don't buy expensive whiskey Now, E is this. This is the Russell's Reserve. Now, this is a Russell's Reserve single barrel. This is a pick that uh, is a local group. This is called Blackout. It's a local pick with a liquor store. I won't name the group for a variety of reasons. But this pick has won every single side-by-side -side I've ever done with it versus other uh, Russell's Reserve picks. It's getting kind of low, but you know, it's it's won a lot of picks. That was number six, um, which I put in the third slot. I think we're about to find out I'm a cheap drunk. I think that's what we're about to find out. Okay. In the uh, the slot I put as the three. So if you're curious on prices, the one the, that Russell's Reserve was like a fifty. I think that's fifty to seventy five. Yeah, it is. That's fifty to seventy five, and I put it at the two hundred plus range. So even though I didn't put it 
as high in my rankings, I thought that that $50 bottle was $200 or more. So that should tell you something. Um, now D, I put in my number three slot, which is the uh, 50 to $75 range. And it's actually from the lowest range, my $30 and under range, it is a Larceny store pick from Rural Inn number two. And I thought that this one was my fourth favorite. So what I'm what I'm learning here is that the store picks are overperforming and the high dollar sourced whiskeys are underperforming. That's informative. That should tell you something. I don't know what, but it should tell you something. Kyle needs a Hennessy and Sprite. I would drink a Hennessy and Sprite. Well, I didn't know what it was, but I got this one right as well, I think. Yeah. So, B, which I put at the four slot. This was actually my favorite one. Big surprise here, guys. This is a huge surprise. Big fucking surprise. My favorite pour of all the ones I tried today was the Remus Repeal Reserve version four. Focus on it. Focus on it. Focus on it. There it goes. This bottle, um, just under hundred bucks, I believe. But and I called that this was the seventy-five to one hundred dollar bottle. I I got the, the the dollar range right on this bottle. But I am actually very surprised that uh, the Remus Repeal Number Four was my favorite bottle of the night. That really surprised me. Mike McAllister almost bought a Hennessy Masters Collection bottle the other day. So I'm in a group of whiskey drinkers that has access to taste all of the Hennessy Masters Collection. I'm seriously thinking about trying that. It's expensive, but I kind of want to do it anyway. Last but not least, here's another other overperformer. Now again, again, I put this in the right slot. Um, Michter's American. Uh, I put this in the number two position, which it is. It's between thirty and fifty dollars. But I rank this on my flavor rankings number two. So let's go through this. So how many of these did I actually get right in terms of where they should be placed? I got the the re I, I did not get the old Carter right. I did not get the Russells right. I got everything else right though. I think. No. I got three things right. The slow motion by Jay Mattingly was right. The Remus was right. And the Mictors was right. I did not get the Russells, the Larceny store pick, or the old Carter right. Um, so, that tells me that uh, I was really I was really favoring the store pick. Well, I, I don't know. Something must have been wrong with me tonight because... <laughs> Why I like the the repeal reserve by Remus the best really throws me off. It's interesting that I thought that the Russells was the most expensive because that is the one that on of all these bottles on the secondary market, this particular Russells pick is the most expensive. So, I knew it was an expensive bottle even though it wasn't on paper an MSRP. Um I knew what the slow motion was, so I placed it correctly. The thing that blew me blew my mind is that the old Carter, I knew the old Carter was in this lineup. I was right about that, but I really, oh, I just really placed it poorly. Probably, Akeem. Yeah. Bourbon Baller's, Bourbon Baller's in the industry, so that helps. Wow. Wow. So I got three of the five right uh, in terms of the dollar value placement. The, the two most expensive pours were my least two favorite. And I am not usually an MGP guy, but my favorite of the bunch was the repeal batch four. 
And my second favorite of the bunch was the Michter's American, but I kind of am not surprised by this. This bottle is fucking underrated. I love this bottle. If you don't have this bottle and you can get this bottle, go buy this bottle. Um, I'm actually very surprised by the Larceny store pick because it really fucking tastes, really fucking tastes like a double oat. The Michter's I'm less surprised by because I could put my finger on it, but it definitely has sort of, uh, this sort of nice softness, which of all these whiskeys, the Michter's American's the lowest proof. It's 41.7%. So it's a low proof, so I'm not that surprised that it was as gentle as it was, but man, that old Carter, guys, that that's disappointing. I really liked a lot of their stuff. This this batch five is just not my jam, I guess. Go figure. Maybe it's opened up poorly for me. When I spoke with Mark, Mark Carter about this, um, Mark mentioned that he thinks the whiskeys are best at their best, right when they are opened or within a week or two of them opening. He says most of the Carter products are designed to be drank very early and very quick. Um, so if you buy an old Carter bottle, I would highly recommend putting some uh, neutral gas on top of it as soon as you open it to try to retain as much as you can of that um, uh, that that original taste. Mike says, I've been screaming Michter's American is really good for a while. You know, I I really liked it when I did my, my Michter's Christmas December series of videos. And so I've been super glad I had the Michter's American. And ever since then, I've said, like, Michter's American is going to stay in my lineup. Um, and uh, this just reconfirms that. I mean, shit, the Repeal Reserve is, like, more than double the price of the Michter's American around here. And the Michter's American was number two, and the Real Repeal Reserve was number one. And they beat out these fucking $100, $150 bottles, so. I learn something every day. <laughs> Akeem says he took a step down from Ricard to sip on the Louis XIII. <laughs> well, Ben's got to run. We hope you can join again, Ben. Thanks for joining me, my brother. Have a good night. Well, um... I'm, I'm checking to see if anybody OnlyFans style has sent me money on Venmo to tell me what to do. I'm not going to put a vibrator in my ass because OnlyFans is not this platform. But, <laughs> but uh, I do want to keep drinking and keep chatting with you guys. Uh, I, I'm just kind of dumbfounded. Let, you know what? Let's do this. Let's get a ice sphere. And then we will try out the rest of this Jay Mattingly on ice. Because I, I really believe that this is going to shine with a cube. So give me 30 seconds. Got my cube. Um, clear ice is fun. Uh, I, the bottom has only become less clear and the top a little bit because it's had some time uh, in the freezer. This is not freshly made clear ice, but you can see that's pretty goddamn clear. I will be offering some information on how to make that in the near future. Nate needs me to try FAE. It's good. I definitely will try it. Yolanda has joined the chat. What's up, girl? How you doing? Let's let's put this slow motion on ice. Love it. I love this glass. Let me just top, top, top that off a little bit. Uh, 
this is my favorite glass is like I can it's got this you can see that clear line from the clear ice you can see my hand behind it it's just such a cool glass <laughs> um, we'll give that a few minutes to breathe uh, the old Carter though what the fuck happened there As that old Carter has opened up, um, it's just gotten very oaky in a way that I don't prefer. I'm not a big oak person, as everyone who watches this regularly knows. Um, man, that that's disappointing. Um, the batch five, I, I it was I thought it was pretty decent initially. It wasn't my favorite, but shit. Keem keeps teasing me with that seagrass. We gotta make that happen, man. Mike says, check that OnlyFans. Is that like polishing a turd? <laughs> yeah, Yolanda doesn't join these streams very much anymore. She's sick of me. She's done. She's ready to get away from my ass. You heard it here first. Yolanda's coming back on a stream. By the way, I don't know if Mike Halliday is still in the chat. He was here a minute ago, but or an hour ago, or whatever. But um, Mike Halliday, if you hear me, send me the list of those whiskeys that you gave me to taste blind, because I would love to do that in the stream very soon. Hakeem is here for it. What's up? <laughs> Bourbon baller, the tequila stream. We'd love to do one. Man, I'm disappointed in that. All right, Michter's American. Uh... Let's let's go ahead and clear out this. I mean, I gotta tell you guys, and it's one of those things, isn't it? Like, as soon as you taste a whiskey, you know, like, oh yeah. Like, after I did the reveal and I went back and I tasted number four, which was B, which was the Remus. I went, oh yeah, of course that's the Remus. Of course it is. But what's weird is I liked it better blind. Like, knowing it's the Remus... God, okay, I will. You guys, calm down. I'm in the middle of a story. Everybody's like, check your Venmo. I will. Thank you for sending me money. <laughs> we can do that, Mike. We can make that happen. Um, actually, you know what, Mike? That will give me a good excuse to put together a list, which is something I've been wanting to do. So we'll put together a list, um, and you can communicate with Yolanda directly to make that happen. Uh, but yeah, like as soon as I taste that, that fucking Remus, while knowing it's Remus, I go, oh yeah, that's Remus. I don't like it as much. When I tasted it blind, it, it won the day. This Mictor's American, I like better. I I gotta wonder too, like if putting if putting prices on shit, that's totally true. Yolanda says Bourbon Baller send us a flight of tequila and we'll do it. That's hundred percent true. Bourbon Baller, send us a flight of tequila and we will do it on on the air. Um, looking at how things are set up here. I can't help but feel like some some kind of consideration had to go towards my monetary value because the Russell's Reserve was my highest dollar. I assumed that was the most expensive one, even though it was my third favorite of six. Now this here is the Mattingly Slow Motion 139 proof. 13-year American Oak, Indiana, distilled. Yeah. I really like that on ice. Um, it's very sweet. It's very vanilla. It's like straight-up vanilla extract, slightly oaky, slightly cinnamon. 
Like that that behooves itself. I don't know. That handles ice very well. Yolanda, what am I setting up? What did I just get volunteered for? It's an OnlyFans account. Um, and if you don't know what an OnlyFans is, Google it. Because I'm not going to explain it to you. <clears throat> Mark G's got to run. Great chat. Good to see you, my brother. Have a good night. I, You know what? I really like the fact that we got people in this chat that announce when they're leaving. Like, that says to me... Y'all are engaged. Y'all feel like you're a part of this. That's exactly what I fucking want. I'm so... As, as sad as I am to see people leave, I love the fact that they're telling me they're leaving. That means a lot to me. Um, who said you were doing it? All you gotta do is hold the camera, Yolanda. We just gotta find a way to get my ass in the, in the camera. You know, I gotta get, like, up, up in it. Uh, I'll show you later what Mark wants to do. Or no, what Mike wants to do. I, uh, Mark was leaving. What Mike wants to do. It's not that. <laughs> Akeem, if you send me $100, I'll send you a whole gallon of bath water. Or $5. Actually, if you send me $5, I'll send you a whole gallon of bath water. Send me $5 right there, Akeem. Do it. Do it, and I'll send you bath water. Come be a little simp for, for, my, for my whiskey channel. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to get fired from my job doing this shit. Okay. Um, I do want to go back. Um, oh, and OnlyFans slash Corn Daddy for... Sure, Mike McAllister. Yeah, Trev says, so you need me to get a link to your ice... Oh. Trev says, so you need to get me a link to your ice fierce thing on Amazon before I get my Jalen Manningly pick. We can do that. I'm Like I said, I, I gotta get the website sorted out, and I gotta get the... Uh, <clears throat> the Amazon link sorted out. <laughs> I keep, oh baby, let me send for that bath water. I got you, bro. I got you. Um, yeah, uh, Trev, I'll, I'll get that link together. I know, I know I said I'd get it together a couple days ago. I, I had all kinds of fucking problems with the website. Um, I'm gonna get it together either tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, Nate. I'll get it together either tomorrow or Saturday. Um, uh, so, by the beginning of next week, I will have my Amazon link set up so that when I recommend things in these kinds of videos, I can just put an Amazon link in the description and you can get it. So Yolanda's out. She can't handle this. Akeem, you're too much for my lady. Uh, this, uh, oh man, God, the nose on this Russell is great. I will say the Russell's, um, When you think about it, you can tell it's turkey. You can tell it's a turkey product. Uh, all wild turkey products have some sort of similarity that I can't quite put my finger on. But um, um, the complexity, I think, is why I said it was the two hundred dollar old Carter. The old Carter to me felt complex but very out of whack, and I think that's a result of I've had this bottle open for a long time, and it's probably down to the last third or a quarter uh i think that it got out of whack over time whereas the russells is very complex but it still feels balanced even though it's down to the nubbins and i will say when i first tried each of these bottles when i first tried this old carter i loved it when i first tried this russells hated it so they've opened up in kind of opposite directions Trev just poured a bourbon enthusiast pick of Russell's. So you just keep talking about Russell's. Akeem just picked up the new batch of the Red Breast 27. Really, really good, but could use a bit more complexity for $500. It does jump out of the glass to some wonderful flavors, though. I gotta come back to your place, Akeem. 
I gotta come back up there. I got. I, I've been wanting to try the red breast twenty seven, man. I, I gotta come back up there, son of a bitch. I can't quit you. <laughs> yeah, some of the our next sample is gonna set out Kyle's bathwater. <laughs> That's right, Mike. Get ready, brother. Get ready. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Trev. Akeem doesn't fuck around. Ooh. Yes. Yes. The fucking Jay Mattingly with some ice in it. It does a lot that a lot that I want. And you know, I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of whiskey tube that will say drink it how you want it but then they kind of shame you for putting ice on it or doing different things with it um i really believe that you should drink it how you want it but i also believe that there are certain whiskeys that drink better different ways and not every whiskey drinks better neat some whiskeys are literally designed to put on ice to put with some coke even like, whiskeys are designed to be drank different ways. And I tell you what, this thing's 139 proof, and it drinks so good on ice. It is... It's soft, it's sweet, it's got tons of vanilla, it's got a light, oaky finish. And, you know, even with this big-ass cube in it, it's still like 130% alcohol, so it's going to be a lot of proof... But it's not going to hit you like that. It's very easily, maybe dangerously so, easy to drink. <sighs> I missed a lot of chat. Here we go. Bourbon bottle waiting for that wild turkey char barrel to get released. <sighs> Honestly, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know, man. I'm worried about that because every wild turkey master's keep I've tried thus far, I've really liked. And I did a video with Nate earlier on in my career that has a lot of those side by side that I really liked. Um, I've had a couple of other tastes of, of the more recent batches that were really solid. They weren't my favorites, but they were solid. Um, I don't know, man. The, the double char or the extra char, it can hit or it can fall. And if the new Master's Keep is, is a double... Um, well, so I've heard the new Master's Keep is actually a toasted barrel. If it's actually a heavy char a la Parker's, I'm into it. The Parker's heavy char I had was phenomenal. Phenomenal. The toasted barrels that I've had have almost exclusively been meh. So, if in fact the, uh, the new Wild Turkey product is a heavy char, I might be into it. But we'll see. Trev said he saw the E.H. Taylor Warehouse C bottle released in June. Anybody else excited to never see it? I mean, I'd love to, I look forward to never seeing it. Maybe I can uh, hook up with somebody that'll have some of it to try. Uh, we'll see. Matter of fact, I'm really hoping to do uh, a series of E.H. Taylor tastings. I've got three or four of the very rare releases. I'm hoping to get all of them and do them side by side, but I think that's pretty unlikely. We'll see. We'll see. Mike McAllister says he really feels like rum is best over ice or mixed. Fair enough. <clears throat> Akeem says if you like the 12, you'll love the 27. Same profile, but really amped up. That makes me excited because I really like the 12 red breast. It's solid stuff. The I actually did a Patreon exclusive review of the red breast 15. So if you're not in the Patreon, go check that out. Patreon.com slash the... Drink Pro. $3 a month level will get you access to that shit. Akeem says the Wild Turkey 17 Masters Keep was a big hit with me. Akeem, was it the 17 or was it the 17 Bottled and Bond? Because they are very different. Bourbon Baller got Char Barrel Masters Keep hater. You might. You might. Alright, let's, uh... Let's go back to this, uh, you know, this, this, um, ah! Lars, man, I'm going to break some glass for the end of this night. Th this Larceny pick is okay. Not my favorite, but, um, man, and as soon as I fucking know what it is, I smell it and I can recognize it. That's frustrating because 
I don't understand why blind me and knowing me smell and taste things so differently. I gotta get that shit trained up. That's, uh... That's frustrating. Where's Ben? Ben... <laughs> Ben, who just started his own YouTube channel, get your palate trained up because mine is garbage and it's embarrassing. All right. Akeem's never had the first one. We got to get you to try the 17 year standard because this the 17 bottle at the bottom was just okay for me, but the first 17 was phenomenal. Yeah, Trev. Trev, myself, and Nate all tried the 17 versus the Bottled and Bond. I think I did a video on that. I think if somebody finds that video, throw a link in the chat because it's out there. I did a video with Trev and Nate comparing 17 versus the 17 Bottled and Bond, and the 17 won for me. I think Trev preferred the Bottled and Bond, but... Now Nate's trying to trade with Akeem. He'll send you some really great samples, Nate. Yeah, that... It's so fucking weird. Like, knowing what they are, I can really tell that's Larsen. I can really tell the other one was Mictors. Akeem says, yo, Kyle, you try that E.H. Taylor that VNT just raffled? It was good, but the 1792 pick that they just did was better, in my opinion. Akeem, I was on the pick, that E.H. Taylor pick, that Vine and Table just raffled. I was on that pick. Um, so, yes, I did taste it. And I thought it was very good. I have not tried the 1792 that they just did. I did not get my hands on that, but I really liked that E.H. Taylor pick, so <laughs> it's going to be a hard sell for me, but I'd love to try it, Akeem. If you got that 1792 pick, I'd love to try it, brother. Nate, thank you, brother. He's posting the YouTube link to the video where him, myself, and Trevor all try 1792 um, no, you got me fucking thinking 1792 now. That's, I blame Akeem for that. You, it was a 17-year wild turkey versus the 17-year bald and bond wild turkey. They are meaningfully different, and I far preferred the 17-year not bald and bond. This is the E.H. Taylor single barrel that uh, Akeem is talking about. I picked this shit. I picked it! <laughs> Akeem says, I only had one small dram of the E.H. Taylor. Well, I'll tell you what, Akeem. I'm going to come up there and we're going to drink some of your fancy shit and I'll bring that and a couple others and we'll 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 have a party. How's that sound? Or no, you know what? No. You come down to me, motherfucker. You come to the streets. <laughs> you come down to the streets of Indianapolis. Get out of your comfortable suburb and come drink with these real fuckers. <laughs> you come down here and you can drink anything I've got. <laughs> Nate Nate <laughs> Kyle's EHD pick sucks. Bourbon baller, nicely done. Where's my tornado store pick? I'll get right on that, man. I'll just call up my friends over at fucking Buffalo Trace. I'll call up Mr. Wheatley. Harlan. Harlan and I are on a first name basis, you know. Shit, man. This stuff is dangerous. You put a cube in this, and it just becomes like water. Not really, but it's not at all hot. It's just literally like. It reminds me of vanilla icing. Yeah, it's like vanilla icing with a hint of like vanilla extract, and then it finishes with some oak. <laughs> I keep the streets of rage type shit. Get deep in whiskey and fight in the streets of Fountain Square. 
Trev says, me and the wife are kidless this weekend. We can make a trick to Indy this weekend. Man, I as much as I would love to bring you in, this weekend's going to be a disaster for me. Um, I've got a lot of things going on. Um, if you can make it to Indy, I, can, I can probably make space for you, but we're going to... Uh, I'll say this, Trev. If you can make it to Indy, we will share some pours. But we will probably also... Go somewhere where you will meet other people in my life, which could be good and could be bad. <laughs> so take that cryptic message and do with it what you will. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I've had several drinks, but we need RZA to do the soundtrack. Man, you can't even see this shit. Hold on. Let me give you guys... Like, I've got, like, a beat machine. Like, that machina will make fucking beats. Like, if somebody wants to come over here and rap... Ugh. There we go. If somebody wants to come over here and rap, I can make it happen. I drink and I know things is in the chat. Drink Pro doing what he does best. What's going on, my man? Glad to have you, bro. Yeah, I'm drinking whiskey. I, I really cannot believe... You know what? So, I drink and I know things. I'm guessing that's Josh. And Josh was just talking about Old Carter. And I cannot believe that it finished dead last in my lineup tonight. Against stuff that is pretty cheap. I mean, it lost to the Victor's American. It lost to the Larceny store pick it this was my favorite pour of the night which really you know threw me for a loop the number four remus repeal reserve the jay maddenly slow motion it, it beat you know it beat that the russell's reserve pick i knew that was gonna win but you know it's just it just blew my mind nate says i want to hear trevor rap on your beats nate i would love to freestyle with you two motherfuckers. If I got Trevor and Nate and myself on a beat and we're all freestyling, that would be a fucking blast. I would have so much fun. I would happily house all of that nonsense and provide the whiskey because I love freestyling, especially when I've had a few pours. Uh, and most people around me in my life can't do it. Um, I think they can do it, but they choose not to do it. They're worried about sounding dumb or some stupid bullshit. Like, just say words off the top of your head and see how it goes. Yeah, no, I drink, I know things. I, I'm just going to say Josh. Josh, you're totally right, brother. Like, this is amazing. Matter of fact, it was my number two. Like, my number one pour tonight was this which I was surprised by, but my number two pour was the Mictors American, which is literally less than half the price of the Remus 4. We can get you many pours, Nate. We'll get you drunk enough to rap. That farmer rap, man, you gotta watch out for those. Those country boys, they got nothing but time. They got nothing but time, bourbon baller. That's how you come up with raps in your head. You just get time. Mike McAllister, we need to have a Drink Pro 2021 meetup. I'll bring some great barbecue. We'll, we'll do that. We'll make that happen. I don't know if y'all are on TikTok, but uh, Mike's invited the barbecue. Pacers lost. Very frustrating. Lissai. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I think Nate asks where Mike lives. I think he lives on the eastern part of Ohio, I think. But I can't really remember. Um, yeah, I mean, this was a fun exercise. I do think that it, it shows... What I think tonight showed, for me personally, was that there is a difference in price point, but it's not really what you think. I think that different pricing points out to different quality. And sometimes quality doesn't mean what you think it means. And sometimes the secondary market will properly correct for quality, and sometimes it will not. I did not guess that Larceny was in here. Um, 
the Larceny overperformed. But the Larceny was the only overperformance that I did not expect. And the underperformances I kind of did expect, just because of my personal palette. So, you know, I think that's interesting. It's an interesting point. Yeah, Southern Ohio. That's where Mike is. All right, guys. I need to get myself some dinner. Uh, I've got food in a crock pot waiting for me. I've had lots of whiskey. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, <laughs> Bourbon Baller says, if you get Cardi to shake it, I might rap. Uh, <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank you all so much for joining me. We're going to do this again next Thursday. Um... I think I will be doing a Patreon exclusive stream very soon. So please consider joining the Patreon. It's $3 a month at the lowest level. And that will get you access to the monthly live streams. You can go to the higher levels to get some really cool benefits like opportunities to get bottles for free. Not right to buy. For free. Patreon.com slash the drink pro. There it is. You can get opportunities to, buy bo to get bottles for free. You can get opportunities for samples which are just guaranteed at certain levels. All kinds of really cool content up there. Some exclusive merch that's coming very soon, as soon as the dude fixes his laser. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I didn't say that before. His laser it needs to be fixed, and then you'll get some free, exclusive Drink Pro merch. Um, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go eat some pineapple pork. Y'all keep drinking.